So here's a question for you. What do you do when you run out of PCIe lanes or want to use an 8x PCIe slot for two SSDs? Well, you can either buy a very high-end server motherboard that has a BIOS which properly supports splitting up a single PCIe slot into multiple slots electrically, or you can take a look at cards like this. This is the Rytop M.2 NVMe SSD to PCIe 3.18x adapter. This card is pretty cool because it lets you put two SSDs into one 8x PCIe slot. The clever part is underneath this red heatsink over here. There is an onboard controller which does all of the bifurcation for you. This adapter card plugs into a single PCIe 3.18x slot on your motherboard and it provides you with two M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs such as the ones we have here. It's pretty straightforward to use, but the best part is that the motherboard and or the BIOS speaks directly to the controller on the card itself and doesn't have to do anything clever on its own. It just works, mostly. Uh, we'll get onto that in just a minute. This card is a PCIe Gen 3 card with eight lanes available. This gives you plenty of bandwidth for high-speed storage devices like the pair of NVMe drives I have on the card today. Though it is worth noting that Gen 3 PCIe is starting to get on a little bit and some of the more modern platforms you might find have Gen 4 and even Gen 5 drives on the really high-end kind of gamer motherboard and the new, the new stuff that's coming out these days. However, in my case here, I have a few year old pair of Gen 3 Toshiba data center grade NVMe SSDs. I picked these up a couple of years ago to run in ESXi when I was working at Red Hat doing a bunch of OpenShift stuff in my home lab. And I picked these up on a group buy as part of the serverbuilds.net forums. Should totally go and check those guys out, by the way. I think they're still active, at least I hope they are, because they, they do fantastic stuff. There'll be a link to serverbuilds.net in the description. Where this gets interesting though is each of the M.2 slots here gets four PCIe lanes to itself, which allows my NVMe drives to operate at their full potential as is easily verified by using LSPCI, which I'll put up on the screen now for you. This specific card supports a multitude of SSD sizes from 2230 to 2280 and all the way up to these big boys I have here, the 22110 size. The numbering, by the way, refers to the length of the SSD. So 2230 mil, 2280 mil, and 22110 millimeters, right? I don't know if you knew that, but now you do. It's worth noting that you don't need a high-end motherboard for this, and that really is the story here. A very simple $80 card can turn a single ATEX slot into a dual NVMe solution. And in some cases, that might just be what takes a motherboard from being just that bit too tight to meet your needs to being, ah, oh, I can actually use this one now, which is what happened to me with uh, the i5-13600K and Supermicro X13 SAE-F that this is sitting in these days. So as long as you have that PCIe slot available, it can be either an 8X or a 16X slot. You don't need any special BIOS stuff. It just literally needs to be an electrical 8X slot because this controller connects back to the chipset at 8x or to the CPU at 8x with, with eight lanes. And then it does the splitting, the bifurcation of those lanes into two sets of four. That happens all underneath the red heatsink over here. So, so far as the system is concerned, the CPU is concerned, it's talking directly to the controller here, not talking directly to the SSDs, although it's it's not too dissimilar from like an, an onboard SATA controller on your motherboard that then sp uh, splits out to six or eight SATA devices. So the motherboard talks to the SATA controller and then the disk controller, this bit here, talks to the disks itself. So if you've only got uh, an 8X or a 16X slot free, no worries, this card will work for you. A 4X slot isn't enough in this scenario. I did run into some weirdness with this card though. With ASPM in particular, I had an adjacent GPU, the NVIDIA A4000 I referenced a moment ago, on the Supermicro X13 SAE-F motherboard, the GPU was giving me some, what was it, like, it wasn't twist lock, it was some kind of lock error, I forget what exactly, but it was some kind of a, a collision in memory space for the pass through of that GPU that was causing some performance issues, but it, it was good enough for image machine learning and good enough for Olama that I just kind of ignored it and hand waved it away, until I put this card in the next slot, 
And so what happened was the, these two discs here have a ZFS mirror on them. Uh, and they showed up right away. I did uh, ZFS import, and it showed me that my uh, app data, because this is where all my app data for all of my containers and LXCs and all that kind of stuff that lives on here in this mirror. Did the ZFS import, the NVMe app data pool showed up. I was like, great, that was really, really easy. And then I actually imported the pool and it put some IO load on the controller and suddenly I was getting IO errors and the GPU stopped working in the VM next door. And I'm just like, what is going on here? So I'm not sure if this is a super micro motherboard issue or whether this is just some weirdness around trying to use a consumer CPU to do server grade things or whatever. But um, no matter what I tried in terms of forcing ASPM through kernel command line options and boot options in Grub or System D boot, uh, the ASPM just would not enable on this card and it wouldn't enable on the SSDs either, which meant that by just adding just this card alone, I added about 10 to 15 watts to my system, which means they get warm. So you're gonna need a fan somewhere in the vicinity or at least a reasonable amount of airflow just to deal with 10 or 15 watts of heat, even if they're just sat there not doing a whole bunch. So despite the fact that the disc controller and the discs themselves and the GPU all showed up in separate IO MMU groups for the PCIe pass-through side of things, I still ran into these kind of weird issues. So I ended up removing the PCIe pass-through requirement completely from the equation by taking the NVIDIA GPU out of a virtual machine and passing it through, well, kind of sharing it instead, not passing it through, but sharing it with an LXC container instead, which by the way, there will be a ton of content coming on NVIDIA GPUs and LXCs and Olama and all that kind of stuff. So do get subscribed to the channel to learn more about that. ZFS works well with these two disks in this configuration. And again, this configuration has so far proven to be quite reliable, except for that caveat I mentioned previously about adjacently pass through PCIe cards. But again, I can't be certain if that's a motherboard issue, if that's a Rytop M.2 NVMe card issue, or just operator error, uh, who knows, PEBCAC maybe. So who needs a card like this? Well, really, it's anybody that's either run out of M.2 slots and wants an easy way to turn an ATEX or a 16X slot into a, a place where you can pop two more SSDs in, or someone that's out of M.2 slots, or someone that's just curious about fun and interesting hardware that uh, means your motherboard has to do less work and the disk controller offloads some of the kind of more esoteric bifurcation stuff. So to wrap things up, the Rytop Dual NVMe PCIe adapter is a simple solution to, I think probably a relatively common problem when we're looking at trying to extract the absolute most from consumer grade motherboards, certainly, maybe not the Threadripper Pro that I covered the other week, but um, definitely consumer grade motherboards will almost certainly all suffer from at some point or another. God, I wish I could just shove one more SSD into this thing. Well, here's a solution for you folks. So at around $80, it's an okay compromise in terms of cost. I think if this was a $50 or a $60 card, that would be just a slam dunk. But at $80, bucks, it's starting to get just a little pricey for what it is. But that said, the alternative is either build around a platform that is server grade from the, the get-go that has all the lanes, like a, an Epic or a Threadripper Pro or something, a platform that has all the lanes you could ever possibly need. So you pay for that upfront in terms of those platforms are quite expensive to buy into, or you can build a server around used enterprise gear. And instead of paying a high upfront cost for the hardware, you'll pay a high cost to your utility company for your electric bill instead. This dual NVMe card is a brain dead simple way to add two high speed NVMe drives without upgrading your entire system. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I've been Alex from KTZ Systems.